YouTube. Try stars, try stars, truck it. Thanks for tuning in. And in this video, I'm just gonna give you guys a recap of when I just started off as an owner operator, right? When I just in the process of buying my truck, everything that I've been through, everything that I go through, you know what I mean? I almost got robbed from Scotiabank and an Indian guy from Ontario. Now, this story, I think you would want to hear it because if you're planning on buying a truck or if you're planning on, you know, doing business while you're, you know, starting out by yourself, doing your thing, don't know much about the other world. You're just going out there based on experience and knowledge. You're just going to go out there and get stuff done, you know, because by the end of the day, there is no one to do it for you. So in this video, I'm just going to cover all that topic to just give you guys a run back from where I'm coming from to where I'm at at this present moment. Thanks for tuning in and right after these messages, you're going to get right into the video. Thank you. For more videos like this, please subscribe. Yes, YouTube, try again. All I want to start this off is like, I want to make, make you guys know, if you didn't watch the previous videos that when I just started off this channel, when I just got my truck and stuff like that, and I took it to the mechanic and I'll show you guys the mistake I made. If you never get the chance to see it, I'm still going to leave a link in the description. And also, I'm going to have a card slide across so you guys can go and check it out. But I'm just going to give you a fast recap. When I was buying my truck, I made a mistake. I made a couple of mistakes. And I'm going to talk about them in this video. This video is going to be a bit long. I'm going to tell you right now. But this, I think this information would be a solid and a good information for you to continue on your trucking journey or whatever journey you're going to go on don't you don't necessarily have to be trucking only but you know you're going to take a page from what happened to me and you know put it in your path of going further in the future and then uh, things will go good for you you know what i mean i already made a mistake don't make the mistake that i made so this is what happened now, when I just got my truck, or going to purchase my truck, I go online and I saw the truck. This is the same truck I own right now, right? I saw the truck and um, on the site that the truck was selling, it is a Canadian site. And a Canadian site normally don't do miles when you're showing on the dash. They don't show miles. It, it, it show kilos. Now, this truck was actually selling, selling on that site. When I actually saw the truck, I was so anxious. I, and I, I fell in love with the truck right away when I saw it. I'm like, yes, I like this truck. You know what I mean? And one of the next things why I like, why, why I did like the truck was the miles, the kilos that was on it. I thought it was kilos. There, that's where I made a mistake. So when I went view the truck, because I did view the truck, I didn't realize that the guy switched on the dash from kilos to miles. So... When I saw 800,000 on the dash, I thought it was kilo. No, that's my mistake for not paying attention. But like I said, I'm going to tell you guys all the mistakes I made and please don't make them. I didn't pay attention and it caught me off guard, right? So I was so excited. I'm like, yes, I'm getting a truck with 800,000 and knowing Volvo truck, you know, 800,000 is when, I mean, most of the stuff already come um, repaired by dealers and stuff. So you will get a good run out of that second hand truck you know what i mean if you know what they're doing if you know how to take care of it so that was what running through my head you know what i mean i went for a test drive i preach the truck like i know how to you know what i mean and i go through it and i saw that there was no eye leak you know what i mean and i and i uh, cranked the engine up and i wait for the turbo to chip in and i drive and i you know, and I, you know, I do what I normal, what, what you know, a normal buyer would do. But what I did wrong was didn't carry my mechanic to do that pre-inspection before I actually hand over the funds to the guy. That's where I made a mistake. Reason why? When I purchased the truck, it took me like maybe a month, going into two months, to get paperwork, get the loan, you know, sent over to the guy, and the, the old works. You know what I mean? Take me like two months, and so. And after the two months, the truck was actually park in at the guy parking lot for another month because even though i purchased the truck i i, I was i still have personal stuff doing why i didn't go and take the truck at the appointed time the next thing that happened was when i'm ready and everything was organized i go for the went for the truck so when i went for the truck i took it to my mechanic in brampton to have him 
take a look on the purchase that I made, right? And while he was doing his, his, his pre-inspection and, you know, shaking everything, looking on everything, run his laptop on it, you know what I mean, look around, you know what I mean? And soon as he go under the truck, he started to shake the crankshaft, the drive line. And he's, you know, he's shaking the drive line and stuff. And when he came back from under the truck, he's like, I feel an extra play in your drive line. So I think you should go and check out your transmission because it's, it's, the play is not really coming from the, from the diff, from the weird diff. It's coming from the transmission yolk or yolk, yolk. Transmission York, right? So I'm like, really? He said, yes, you need to take take it to the dealer because maybe because it's an automatic truck, I uh, should have that player or not, I'm not sure, so take it to the dealer. Anyway, I took it to the dealer. So when I took it to the dealer, they signed me up, they put the truck around the back. Mark this, I haven't start work as yet. The truck, I just took the truck from where it was parked to my mechanic and that's like 45 minutes away. So when I actually get to the dealer, they told me, listen, your transmission, there's this gear at the back of the transmission that would change the transmission from change the gear to high range to low range. And somewhere around there, something wasn't right. So they're t telling me that you you'd need, this only can maybe drive for another two months or so, but still, you'll have to come in to get this transmission changed or buy a new transmission because it's partially done based on what's going on. Now, at that point, I think, I thought, you know, because 800,000 on the truck, so I know the transmission would be under warranty. Same way. But it wasn't actually 800,000 kilo, it was 800,000 mile because it switched around, so I'm, I'm screwed, right? Now, I call him and I'm like, you know, your transmission is giving problem, right? And he's like, no, um, I have this truck and there's no problem with the transmission and, you know, I never once taken the truck for transmission issue or whatnot. So I'm like, if there is a transmission issue and I mean I just drive a truck for 45 45 minutes basically um, because you know I just took it to my mechanic to get it look after and this is the problem that we I came up with the transmission is no good and you know I was trying to reason with him to like you know what you know at least meet me halfway with the cost of the transmission so we can get it sort out so I can get to start my journey. You know, after we finished that conversation, I couldn't get back his, I couldn't get him back on his phone. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. This, my calls are not going through. So I'm like, okay, I'm screwed. Because now, when you buy a used truck, everyone knows this, when you buy a used truck or used vehicle whatsoever, it is buy as is. So when you buy it and you get it, whatever happened to it, if it didn't catch it from the get-go, it's your problem, right? So that's what happened. Now I have this truck without a transmission on my head and I haven't started. And this is a big purchase for me because this is all my savings that I use to actually get to this point. So that's the reason why I was mentioning to you guys that when you're get, getting out here to buy a truck, make sure you save a good amount of money that when you do your pay down, you still have some money leave back so that if anything whatsoever come up, you can manage. You know what I mean? So lucky for me, I could actually push through, push through in this type of pressure already. Whatever dealer told me, okay, see, because the transmission was 22,000 with the return of the core. The core would be the transmission that is already in my truck. So the old transmission, the Volvo dealer would take it back. It costs like maybe 8,000 or 9,000 dollars they want to take it back for. So the overall, the new one without a core would cost like 32,000 to put the transmission in with labor and everything. I, I wasn't there with 22,000 to get that transmission put in. So they told me, they said, listen, if you get a used transmission, then we can put it in for you because we will just inspect it when you get it and then we will put it in and that's a next option you can try. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, because I didn't even know that. So I go, I right away, I go back and Kijiji. That's a website, a Canadian website that you go on to look for used vehicle, new vehicle, whatnot, you know, advertisement, bed, whatever you want to buy, it's on KGG. You can go ahead and look at it and you will get it. Now, when I actually go online, I saw a transmission similar or same for the one that I'm looking for, selling for $7,000, right? It was $8,000 and I, and I go there and, you know, we were, you know, you know, talking, bargain some price down and stuff. So I, I got it for like $7,000. Now, when upon purchasing that transmission, when I get there, um, I saw that transmission came out of a crash vehicle. Like they buy, they buy crash vehicle and sell parts from it, right? So 
that's where the, the tradition parts come from. It was a 2015 Volvo truck. It was get, you get that front it or it to the front, and that's where the transmission came from, and that's how I come by that used transmission. You know what I mean? Well, I took a lot of pictures, chassis, this, that, from the truck and stuff, and um, the, uh, the guy took it around to the Volvo dealer. Now, let's get back to when I'm buying the transmission. Now, when I'm buying the transmission, what I did was I paid the guy $3,000 from my credit card and $4,000 cash. Now, I want you guys to remember this. $3,000 from my credit card, $4,000 cash right now the receipt that i got right i'm gonna put it on the screen so that you guys can see the receipt was an unwritten receipt bill of laden basically for the transition upon that point getting a bill of laden written by hand it have all the necessary on one side of the paper and you know you have the bill of sale the vin number and you know signature everything is on one side but on the plain side you have to write down like everything else right so it's a written receipt and having a written receipt wasn't so much of a concern to me at the time because i was saying if all the signatures is there and all the information is on there and you know where i purchased it uh you know plus the 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 receipt from the machine that the guy have i was thinking okay this could work if anything to go wrong right this is where the story get more interested now this is what happened when i got when i paid for the transmission he put it in his van and he took it around the volvo dealer right we're, we're close by now when he got to the volvo dealer the guy is at the volvo dealer inspect the transmission so to inspect the transmission they would have to pull it to look inside to see if everything is okay before they go ahead and put it up because you know it's like i think it was like four thousand to three thousand dollars to do the labor you know what i mean that that would be like to, to service it like to change filter put fresh oil in and labor i think it was three thousand dollars if, if, if i'm not lying you know for labor and um you know so they have to inspect it before they put it up and I think taking taking it down was ours was in it too. So all of that came to three thousand something. Now, when the when they pulled the transmission right away, the guy could show me that. <clears throat> sorry, right away the guy could show me um, there is a problem with the transmission. And when I say problem with the transmission, they had a problem with the one of the gears was was broken like and then the guy was explaining to me like listen this the truck that this transmission came from might have been in an accident because the only way this could break like that is if it was going highway speed and then it just instantly stopped so this will this is what happened then this is on the top gear so he's, he's saying to me like if it happened on the top you know it can be a possibility that it happened on, on the bottom too, bottom gears too. So he wouldn't advise me paying that much for the transmission or even putting that transmission in my truck because then when the truck when the gear get into when the truck get into like certain gear because I think that was the eighth gear. So he said when it get to eight gear, it may skip past eight gear and never use it because of no traction there. With the explanation that I got right now. Right away, I call the guy because he just leave, right? I call him. He answer the phone. He's like, "Okay, I'm I'm back at the shop, and there's a ton of traffic, and that will be tomorrow before I could come and, you know, take back this job, take the transmission back because I told him they're not gonna use it based on what is happening, and based on the answer I get, I think he already know that this transmission was not good. The next day. He came back and he picked up the transmission and I went back with him at the, the shop, right? Now, it's time for my refund. And this is where things start to change or turn on the, the, the other side because this guy didn't want to give me back my fund, my full fund for the transmission. 
Now, when I get there, the guy gave me $2,000 cash. I want to give me, give me $3,000 on a check. I was telling me that the ch I can't change the check until like the Friday or something like that. I'm like, what? I'm, so, I'm like, listen, my truck is at the dealer. Need to get fixed. I can't wait on you no know, funds to Friday and stuff like that. I need the funds right now because I need to go and get another transmission so I can get my truck up and out of there and running you know what i mean now the guy started to to you know go around started to back and forth and we're not getting nowhere because i'm there waiting for my funds and this guy's going around going around and right now i'm starting to you know feel this type of way like i'm saying okay this look like this look like it's not going good me as a jamaican or jamaicans overall we we don't normally call the cops to get th things done right they are, we, we, we get things done ourselves, basically. At this point, my mind is clicking like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm at Jamaica. So, you know, so I have to catch myself and be like, no, no, no. Listen, you're in Canada and you know your skin color. Be careful because one phone call and you're gone. So I'm like, you know what? Let me do it the professional way that it should get done. So I, I went back to, you know, like, listen, if I don't get my money now, or my refund right now, I'm gonna go ahead and call the cops to let them come and deal with it. Right away the guy said, call them. No. Tell me to call them. I'm saying to myself, call them. I wonder if this guy know that he have my he have my funds and if I call the cops he could be in trouble. That's that's what I'm saying to myself. But not knowing until I call the cops. Now I went outside and I called them and I'm like, Hello? You know, um, they answered and they said, What's the emergency? And I told them, like, you know, I purchased a transmission yesterday, return it today, and the guy does, don't want to give me back my money for the transmission. And it was a female that answered the phone and she said, We are not. That's not our job. That's not our duty. We are not, that, that's not for police, basically. That's not police work. She's saying for matters like that, you have to do it to a civil, um, small claim court or something like that. That's not a, that's not a crime or that's not a, whatever it is she's saying. But the moral of this is the police doesn't care about you not getting your refund from whatever money you spend. That's not their business. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Right there, I'm like, okay. Now I understand why he's like calling because he, he know this. So because of that, I'm saying, okay, this is something that he's done already. Oh my gosh. No. Oh, these Indians. Now I'm like, all right, cool. Oh, I'm going to get my money now. This left me no other choice. This is not going good. Police have nothing to do with it. Now I have to go back in there to try to get my funds back because I need it, right? I need it to do what I need to do. No. When I went back in there, the, you know, he, he, when I went back in there, he called like maybe four, four or five more Indian guys. There's like six of them in there now and they're talking their language. I don't understand what you're saying, but I'm there and I'm like, I need my money now, you know what I mean? So, you know, there is, you know, like basically ignoring me. I'm like, okay, cool. No, this is when, no, the, 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 the. I, as a Jamaican, you know, I can't hold back for too long. You know, I've been nice, I'm being cool for quite some time now. And, you know, maybe he think, I don't know what, what he think, but I look in the shop because I was inside a shop where there's a ton of truck, there's a ton of, so I look inside the shop and I saw this nice iron lean up, lean to the side of like the gates. And I went over there and I took the iron up and I start to look because now, Remember, the thing is this, when you do damage or when you get yourself in trouble, they're going to call the police and then you're going to get locked up. Already, I know this is what is going to happen. No. So I tell myself, this damage or whatever I'm going to do is going to work, get locking up. Because I'm not going to, you know, like scratch someone or barely do something and then get locked up for that. No, 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 no. It gotta be a full-fledged lock up. You know what I mean? So I was getting ready. You know what I mean? 
So right away he's like, he come out the shop. I don't know if he, he found out what's going on. He's like, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give you your, your, your money. Um, and he's going on like, I'm the one that owe him something. You know what I mean? So he gave me two thousand four hundred dollars cash and sixteen hundred dollars and a check. I'm gonna put the check on the screen so you guys will see. It. And he claimed he don't know how to return the funds back on my credit card by the machine that he have. He pretended, he pretended to call the bank to ask how it's done and he's not getting through based on what he's telling me. So now he's, he's like, uh, maybe I would have to come back for him to put the, the funds on my card. I'm like, no, I'm not going nowhere. I need the funds that right now. So I said, okay, I'm going to call my bank and have them reverse it. So I called Scotiabank. When I called Scotiabank, I got, I got through with an agent and I explained to her what is happening, what's going on and stuff like that. And I explained to her that I should be getting a refund because I returned, I returned a, a item and I need my refund. But the guy at the place told me they don't know how to do the refund back with the machine. So she's like, okay, we can do the re return here, but I would have to talk to the, the merchant because I'd have to get uh, some number another from him. I don't know if the MC number, I don't know what number is it. And plus a number from his copy of the receipt, right? Because I already have mine, but I guess the receipt that come out for the, the dealer or, the, or the, the seller have a different number on it. So I gave him the phone. I told him the, the lady from Scotiabank would like to speak to you about, you know, so he, he spoke with the lady. They talked what they were talking. He gave the number. You know what I mean? He gave what he's supposed to give her. And when I spoke back to her, she told me, everything is okay. The funds is re re um, reversed back onto your card. Right away, I checked my app. And when I checked my app, I, I saw that $3,000 was returned to my card. I'm like, okay, I'm good now. You know what I mean? Now, I went outside and I took a picture of the... Because in the same app, you can take a picture of your check back and front and you can lodge it right away in your account. And that's what I did. So I lodged the check right away on the outside. And the only problem I have at that time was if the check had bounced, um, it was like $1,600 and it would take maybe three days before I would know that the check is bounced. But I, I, I have access to the $1,600 at the moment. So everything combined, I have my $7,000 so I can go to make my purchase or get another transmission now this fall into the next day because it was getting late so the next day i wake up the three thousand is off my credit card gone to the guy at the the place where my money should re return from the, the funds pulled through and gone so i call back scotia bank i'm like um i i had a con conversation yesterday getting my funds return back to my credit card and today i got up and it's gone the thing is i screenshot when the funds came back and i also screenshot when the funds taken off this is what i'm going to tell you guys when the funds take off my credit card there was no record that the funds was returned there, there, it wasn't there. I looked through. It wasn't there. It was clean. Like my statement it was. The, the, there's nothing on it, right? When the funds taken off back, that time wasn't on it either. You know what I mean? It was just taken off from the when the purchase had happened. So I'm like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, what? You know what's going on here? Now, what did the lady at Scotiabank was telling me at the time that the only way. The purchase can go through is because the guy didn't call his bank to have the bank stop the purchase from go through because if he didn't do it on the machine and i do it from my side he would have to do it from his end so that it don't go through because what she's saying is that that purchase there's an agreement between the banks and when um like a person make a purchase with a credit card it depending for three days so if if a return should have been made it would have made with no asset right and uh what when the, this thing take take place it was within two days because the 
the day before I purchased, the other day I returned it and it happened in the afternoon. So the following day, it actually went through. So I guess the Indian guy know, know this stuff, know these stuff, you know? So it was, it was not a problem to do it because he's not going to get into his account anyways, you know what I mean? Now, when that happened, I, I'm like, oh my gosh. Now, I'm living in Nova Scotia and this is Ontario. So this back and forth thing is I have to take planes, I have to... No, no, this is no, this continue for like three months, three months to try to get my three thousand dollars back from this guy, right? Now, every time I call him, he's like, he haven't seen any deposit in his account. When I call Scotia Bank, Scotia Bank said, listen. Once it taken off the credit card in the past three days, it's gonna lodge into his account. You know what I mean? So what the lady was trying to be nice, telling me that okay, give him like a couple more days and then you know call back. And it, it come to the point that it was like ten business days. And when I call this guy, he's like, oh, I haven't seen anything yet. I need to call Scotia Bank. He haven't received anything. I'm like Jesus. Christ. Now I went to um back to Nova um Toronto. And I went around there and I'm like, you know, I come for you guys to check your account and see if the money is there because Scotiabank said you guys have and received the funds. When I spoke to him, he said, okay, we're going to get it done tomorrow. The next day when I go get there, the, the person that was, he wasn't there. So someone that was there saying that, I think it was his father, as I was told, saying that, He's on vacation, not coming back until two weeks' time. Oh my gosh. And he's the only one can do that type of stuff because the account is in his name and whatever they want to say, but that's what was going on. Oh man. Now, at this point, I'm like, Jesus, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? The next step I was, was to do a dispute with the credit card company. Now, I did a dispute with Scotia Bank and when I dispute claims, I dispute basically because the money come off and it's not supposed to, right? I made, it, I made the claim, and when I made the claim, you know, it, 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 that's another process. So I, they get the claim, and that took another two weeks or so before they actually get back to me. When they actually get back, they ask me to send all the information that I have, which will be the written receipt, and I send it along with the, my receipt, and it wasn't enough. But Scotia Bank contact me and be like, they can't make a claim with a written receipt. They have to be on a type, like a printed receipt, not, not written. You know what I mean? So they, they can't go anywhere with this, really. I'm like, Jesus Christ. No, I'm back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, you guys can check back the recording that you have. Because whenever you call Scotia Bank, they have a recording that says, this call is for quality purposes and training this and that and that i'm like then i mean you guys can look back on that call i give them the date and be like you can preview the call you can hear the guy and the lady with the back and forth transaction about giving me uh, funds back and stuff like that and they said they don't use it or they they don't use the recording for that type. i don't know it was something like they don't use the recording or the record no value in this type of thing or something like that i'm like jesus oh <sighs> No, you only leave me to the other choice or the other um, thing step and it's to get a lawyer. So you all boil them back to that because I wasn't going to stop, you know what I mean? So I contacted a lawyer. I gave all my paperwork, all the pictures, everything that I have. And when you look at it, I don't even, have to, I don't even give him any long explanation of what's going on. He look at the paperwork and he's like, this is easy. Okay, his fee was three um three hundred dollars, and I paid him the three hundred dollars, and he wrote a letter. He wrote the letter the Friday, and I contacted him on the Thursday. He wrote the letter the Friday. I got the money the Saturday, back into my account. Scotia Bank called me on the Monday, apologizing that they it was their fault and they overlooked whatever they want to say. Whatever I don't even care what he wasn't want to say. I acted nice though, you know. What I mean, like I mean, like it is what it is, you know, but. I mean, but so many calls and so many back and forth for you to tell me that you, you overlook what you could overlook. <laughs> but anyway, the moral of the story is 
just be careful when you're going out there to do your thing. You know what I mean? I give you this message because it was something that, I mean, it was new to me. All of these things was new to me. And I know if you were going out there to do your thing, it may be new to you too. Maybe this is the first time you're actually hearing this type of stuff. Or maybe you won't even, maybe you wouldn't even make this type of mistake. Who knows? But I just want to put this out there to let you guys know. Be careful when you're spending your money. Make sure your receipts are printed. You know what I mean? Make sure you take pictures of everything, of every details in your phone. If you can record conversation, record conversation too. Because everyone is out there to get you. And when and when they when they already know the system and you don't, that's when they right away. You know what I mean? Um at that point it wasn't it wasn't so clear to me. Everything that I'm doing was my first time. Everything that I'm doing, I'm new to it. You know what I mean? I'm the only one up and down doing this thing to get my thing up and running. You know what I mean? So it was a struggle. And I've been there. I, I go through it. I pull through it. And now it's two years now after this incident happened. Why I took so long to come out and tell you guys? I don't want to give only sad story on my channel, really. And I don't want to make this thing like, okay, I come out here and it's a big task and have anyone being afraid of doing what they can do. You know what I mean? So I give you this story to let you know. Things can happen, but it's not what happened. It's what you do after it happened, you know what I mean? And, you know, try stars. I'm here and I pull through. And it's just the energy and it's just priors, you know, carry you a long way. But thanks for tuning in. You know, it's try stars trucking. Thanks for being here to this point. And if you watched the full entire video, give me a thumbs up so I could know you were here until the videos until the video end leave me a comment of what you think about the situation leave me a comment if this would happen to you leave me a comment what i should have done what how i should have known something was up leave me some comments that's what i'm actually saying thanks for tuning in try start shocking for more videos like this please subscribe